everybody, <clears throat> Pastor Brady here, and uh, just wanted to give you a Bible study for this Sunday afternoon. I know a lot of you uh, are bored Sunday afternoon, Sunday evenings without church, and I wanted to be a blessing to you. Uh, we are living in some crazy times. We're living in uh, a time that really we haven't seen in this country, in this world, as far as what's going on around the world. And so please be in prayer for uh, our nation and for our our, uh, our world, really, that God will heal the, uh, our world of this virus and uh, a lot of things going on. But I wanted to mention quickly, I forgot uh, during the service, there's a couple people that I forgot to, to remind you to pray for. Uh, first of all, I did mention this man, but first of all, pray for Brother James Bukovec. Uh, his father, Chuck, passed away Saturday night. He was in hospice for a long, long time, and uh, he uh, had cancer, and, and it spread to many places. So uh, please be in prayer for James during this time as his father's just passed away. His father was saved. He, he was a believer, and so we'll see him again in heaven one day. We praise the Lord for that. Uh, also, please be in prayer for Emma Mann as well, uh, which is a Brother McDavid's father. I'm sorry, Brother McDavid's mother. And um, she had a biopsy, and uh, they're going to get the results back this coming week for that as to whether or not she has cancer. So please, please, please pray for Emma Mann. And also Rhonda Phillips, as she has the coronavirus, and she worked uh, a, a week or two ago. She began working with some coronavirus patients in the hospital and began exhib exhibiting symptoms. So please be in prayer for her as well that she will be healed. And so far, this is her fourth day, and she's still she's feeling fine. But please be in prayer for uh, those people. Uh, Exodus chapter 17 is where we're going to be reading from today. And again, I pray this is a blessing to you, just something that uh, I got from Scripture. Uh, and this morning, from our, our Sunday morning sermon, we went over verses 1 through 7, and we talked about the mindset of murmuring. How do we get from a mindset of trusting the Lord to a mindset of complaining and murmuring and bickering and arguing. And we talked about how, first of all, there's a problem. In verse 1 of chapter 17, uh, they had no water, and that is a legitimate problem. Oftentimes in our lives, especially now during this coronavirus uh, situation, we find ourselves with a genuine uh, legitimate problem. Uh, but not only was there a problem, that's the first step, but the second uh, point, the second step we see is that they trust in man. Uh, they don't go to God uh, to provide for them. They go to Moses. Well, because of their trusting in him, inevitably man is going to fail you. And I, I've said this time and time again. Uh, if you are uh, coming to church or you're reading your Bible, you're praying or you're trying to serve the Lord because of me, or you're trying to serve the Lord because of a man, a pastor, a preacher, or uh, uh, maybe a godly figure, uh, when that person fails, then you will be disappointed. Uh, you will turn away from God because that person failed. And so we cannot trust in man. We've got to trust in God. And so that's important to understand. That was the biggest mistake they made, trusting in man. And then verse 3, we see that man failed. So there's a problem. They trusted in man, and then man failed. Uh, and the people thirsted there for water. And uh, the people murmured against Moses. In other words, Moses didn't provide the water. Uh, there was no water. Moses didn't have any water for them. And so they trusted in a man. Man failed. And then uh, number four, there was no faith in God. Uh, the very next thing they do is begin to doubt everything that God had done for them, leading them out of Egypt in verse at the end of verse 3 and, and uh, bringing them through, uh, uh, providing manna for them and free food for them for 40 years. And um, uh, they begin to doubt God. They had no faith in him, and then they murmur. And so I hope that helps you a little bit. But let's look at verse uh, 8 of chapter 17. The Bible says, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose you out, men, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Moses did, I'm sorry, so Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Verse 11. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. 
And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Uh, and the Lord, verse 14, the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. So we see here in Exodus uh, chapter 17, uh, we see uh, that Amalek, the grandson of Esau, and you remember that it was Jacob that stole the birthright and the blessing from his brother Esau, who they were twins, but Esau was born first. And so Esau was to have the birthright, and Esau was to have the blessing of his father Isaac when Isaac passed away. And so uh, Jacob deceived Esau and stole that birthright and that blessing from him. And Amalek here is the grandson uh, uh, of Esau. And the descendants of Amalek were called the Amalekites, just like the descendants of Israel. And Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Uh, the descendants of Israel were called Israelites. So we have the Israelites, which are God's people, and we have the Amalekites uh, fighting. Amalek comes up against them. And the Bible says that the Amalekites were persistent enemies. And maybe it was they were a little bitter because uh, the Israelites, uh, their uh, ancestor had stolen from, the, uh, from uh, Amalek's ancestor, uh, Esau, uh, the blessing and the birthright. Uh, but throughout Scripture, we see that Amalek is referred to as the flesh. Uh, in fact, if you look at Galatians chapter 4, verse 22 through 29, it actually refers to those that uh, str would strive against Israel, uh, uh, and it includes uh, uh, those that are, are, are descendants of Isaac, uh, not Israel, but those that would strive against Israel, descendants of Isaac, which would, which would be Esau, uh, were after the flesh. And so the idea here from Galatians chapter 4, verse 20 through, tw through 29, is that these uh, Amalekites were after the flesh. They were a picture of the battle between the flesh and the battle between uh, of the flesh between us, the believer. And so we see here that when Israel would fight in their own strength, what would happen? They would lose the battle. Moses stood on a hill, and Moses had the, the staff of God or the rod of God. And as long as, as long as Moses would hold that staff up uh, to God, God would uh, cause the Israelites to win the battle. But when Moses' arms would get tired and he would let his arms down, then the Amalekites would begin to defeat the Israelites in the battle. And so what happened was Aaron and Hur, H-U-R, that was his name, Aaron and Hur would uh, get behind Moses and they would lift his arms up so that way they could have the power of God on everything that they were doing. Now, we live today in an evil world. It's just the fact of where we are today. We live in a very carnal world. We live in a fleshly world. In fact, we live in a world where even the carnality and the wickedness in the flesh of the world has been brought into the church. But we realize today that we cannot win this battle that we have. Every one of us that is a believer has a battle with our flesh. Until the day that we put this flesh aside and we enter into our perfect bodies in heaven, we are going to battle with our flesh. Now, we all have a soul, we all have a spirit, and we all have a body. And our body is not perfect. At the point of belief, when you said yes to Jesus Christ and you trusted him 100% and in nothing else, uh, you became, your soul became sealed by the Holy Spirit. That means that when your body dies on this earth, your seal is sent straight to heaven. Uh, however, your body on this earth is not perfect. It's not until we get to heaven that we're going to have a perfect body. So our body is still going to sin. If you believe that uh, a, a, a true believer in Christ will never sin, then you are going to have to doubt most of the Bible. Because look at the, birth, the book, the, uh, the letter of 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians that Paul wrote was to the church. These were to save, not unsaved people. And yet he tells them time and time again to stop sinning, stop being carnal, stop being fleshly. So we understand that we as believers, we can be carnal, we can be fleshly and still be saved. However, we're going to bring on the wrath of God and the judgment of God onto our life because of it. So we live in an evil world. And we want to win the battle between the flesh and us. That's The flesh is the Amalekites. We are the Israelites as believers. Uh, uh, we want to win that battle against the flesh. But we cannot win that battle on our own. Romans 7 verse 18 says uh, that uh, Paul said, In my flesh 
dwelleth no good thing. In my body that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. You know what that means? That there's nothing in our flesh. If we rely on our flesh, it'll fail us every time. There's nothing good about our flesh. There's no redeeming qualities about our flesh. And the only way that we can win the battle is relying on the Spirit, relying on God, relying on the Holy Spirit to bring us through. Galatians 5.16 says this, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know what that means? That means if we are to rely only on ourselves, we are not going to be able to win the battle. We must walk in the Spirit, and if we are walking in the Spirit of God, if we are filled with the Spirit of God, if we're trusting in God, we're relying on Him, we're walking in the Spirit, then we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, I have a problem with lying, or I have a problem with pornography, or I have a problem with uh, uh, selfishness, or I have a problem with laziness. Those are all problems that we have in our flesh. Those are the lusts of the flesh. I have a problem with my pride. That's a lust of the flesh. If you are doing those things, if you are consistently living in the lust of the flesh, you are not walking in the Spirit, and there's just no other way around it. But if you are walking in the Spirit, then you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And so we have to realize that we cannot win the spiritual battle today without fighting in the Spirit. That's the only way we're going to be able to do it. Just as Moses lifted up that staff of, of God unto God, he went to God for his power. He went to God uh, for uh, uh, the strength that he needed. Unless we go to God through the Spirit, we will never be able to defeat the Amalekites. We'll never be able to defeat the flesh in our life. Uh, I'll remind you that Paul also said, if you have not the Spirit of Christ, you are none of his, Romans 8, verse 9. Uh, if, you're, if you are listening and you say, well, I don't think I've ever been filled with the Spirit. And I don't think that I've, I, I've ever done anything but walk in the, in the lusts of the flesh. Then it's possible that you don't have the Spirit of Christ today. It's possible that you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of your life sealing your soul. And if that's you today and you say, I, I don't have that, then the, the first step that you need to, uh, uh, to, to walk is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Uh, Jesus uh, died, was buried, and rose again from the grave. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. And if you put your faith and your trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ as the only way to take you to heaven, the Bible is very clear, that is the, is the way that we receive the Spirit. Uh, every one of us that has believed has received the Spirit. In, in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13, the Bible tells us that. And so if you don't have the Spirit, then you have not truly believed on Jesus Christ and in Him alone, not in Jesus and getting baptized. Hey, listen, I'm a Baptist. I believe in baptizing, but baptism doesn't take you to heaven. Uh, not in Jesus and being good, not in Jesus and giving money to the church, not in Jesus uh, and trying to do, uh, uh, do all the Ten Commandments. That's never going to do it. You've got to believe in Jesus alone. You've got to pray and trust Him as the only way. Put all your faith in Him as the only way. You have to believe that He is and that He's a rewarder of those that trust in Him. And so that's how you receive the Spirit. But your battle can only be won with God. Hey, if you're not reading your Bible, you're not walking in the Spirit, you're not praying, you're not living right, you're not going to be able to defeat the flesh. If you're living in sin, you're not going to have the Spirit, and you're not going to win that battle. So, hey, if you're a believer today, I'd like to encourage you. If you're a believer today and you want to win that battle against the flesh, win that battle against the Amalekites, you've got to walk in the Spirit. You have got to employ the help of God. You've got to go to God for strength. Hey, stay faithful in your prayer. I know this is a, 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 a very difficult time. I know that many aren't working. Many are struggling financially. Listen, don't give up on God. Don't stop reading your Bible. Don't stop studying the Word of God. Every scripture is profitable uh, for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness. Don't give up on the Word of God. Don't doubt it. Uh, uh, don't give up in your prayer life. Keep praying. Keep talking to God. Keep telling Him what you need. Keep telling Him the problems that you're facing. And, and live right. Live a separated life. Live holy. That word holy means separated unto God. Away from the world and set apart unto God. Live a holy life. And then you'll be able to walk in the Spirit. You'll be able uh, to deny the lust of the flesh, and then you'll have that victory uh, over Satan and over the flesh. Listen, if there's anything I can do for you, if you've got a prayer request, if you have a question about the Bible, uh, if you have a need, 
whatever it is, I, don't, I may be able to help you. If you'll message me, if you'll give me a call, give me a text. My phone number is 972-743-6985. Uh, Again, that's area code 972-743-6985. You can email me, message me on Facebook, message me on YouTube as well. I'd love to be a blessing to you. But until then, God bless you, and uh, we'll see you next time.